Okay, first off, my name is Carol and I'm with Fulfillment Fund and we have Monique Boyd who is with us today. And I'm gonna let Monique start off by telling us a little bit about herself and where she is um, from, where she's working. Thanks for having me. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Monique Boyd. I am the Director of Special Events and Catering for Legends Hospitality at SoFi Stadium, home of the Los Angeles Chargers and home of the Super Bowl champion, Los Angeles Rams. We can actually add that in now. Um, this is my, I'm going into my 10th football season with Legends. I spent seven years at AT&T Stadium in Dallas, home of the Dallas Cowboys. So I've been in sports uh, now for almost about 18 years. Um, I'm originally from Pasadena, from California. I spent 24 years in Dallas. And when they decided that they were gonna dig up Inglewood and place the stadium, um, I was excited about making sure I came back home to open up the stadium. So I've been here since 2020 and we went from hard hats to Super Bowl within two years. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> How did, um, so you, you went to school here in California or did you go to school in Texas? South yes, ma'am, I did. Um, I actually, I grew up in Pasadena. So I'm Pasadena Unified. I graduated from Blair High School and I graduated from Cal State LA. But uh, my, um, my undergrad is actually in journalism and PR. Oh, okay. That's where I was too. How'd you end up going into, um, well, you didn't play football, but how'd you end up doing the events at the football stadium? So kind of a true story in high school, I was actually class president every year I was in high school, but I actually worked, I did the yearbook. Um, I actually planned our prom, I planned homecoming. I planned all of the fundraisers for our class. So I think I've been an event planner probably since I was in ninth grade and just didn't know it. Um, after college, I went into sales, I went to HR, but I always volunteered to help plan like the holiday parties or when a, a friend of mine would get married, I'm like, oh, I really wanna, I wanna help you with your wedding. And I just kind of fell in love with it. It was really by accident. And um, about 20, about 15, about almost uh, 16 years ago, I was sitting at work one day and I was working in sales. And I thought, if I had to work every day for the next 25 years, what would I want to do? And I, you know, it was event planning just fell to it. And I actually um, made my resume into an invitation and I had a list of 10 places that I wanted to work. I didn't even know if they were hiring. And I just sent my resume to them all. And my very, very first job was an entry level event coordinator for the ballpark in Arlington where the Texas Rangers play. And I really started at the bottom and it was literally the best year of my entire life because when you know that you really wanna do it, you work as if, I mean, not everybody obviously has to work for, you don't work for free, but it was something where I really felt like when I worked, um, it just made sense because I would do it. I would do it even if they weren't paying me to do it. <laughs> Amazing. And it definitely shows what we, we talk about a lot, that what you went to college thinking you would do isn't what you ended up doing and really enjoying. But there's little bits and pieces of it that kind of um, pulled through all the way from then to now. Because PR and journalism, there's a lot of things that kind of work with that. Event right. Well, I interned at NBC when I was in college. Um, I, used to, um, NBC, I used to intern for Channel 4. And basically my internship, I had to read the newspapers and write copy uh, for six months. And it was weird because it was um, it was at a time when Los Angeles was kind of going through, I mean, it was really the early nineties primarily, but I really find like a lot of my PR skills and things that I had to learn um, from college really help a lot now because we do have to do a lot of marketing and presentations and whatnot. But uh, most definitely I thought, you know, starting with college, um, it just really kind of furthering on your interest, but really learning how to be well-spoken um, and obviously taking the public um, speaking classes in school really to help too. Um, I know this is a question that probably some people are, are thinking, do you get to go to all the football games too if you're working at the stadium? Did you get to go to the Super Bowl? I worked uh, 111 hours the week of Super Bowl. I worked 19 hours the day of Super Bowl. I had to be at work at 4.30 in the morning the day of Super Bowl and I was on a luxury liner. We couldn't park at the stadium the day of Super Bowl. So you actually had to park off site and they bust you in. So we had to, I was on a bus at one o'clock in the morning going back to my car after Super Bowl. So yes, I was there. Um, when you do work in hospitality, um, I actually worked in Dallas for five years before I actually saw the actual games because what happens is you, I work behind the scenes. So I work in places where you all don't know. 
we feed the players, we feed the media, we feed the cheerleaders, we feed the visiting team, um, we feed uh, when the writers, the press writers are up in the press box. So everything I do is pretty much behind the scenes. So unfortunately, I didn't even know that the Rams were even going to win the Super Bowl until somebody actually said, go run to a TV. So yeah, um, it's probably one of the one things that I will say, people ask me now, did I watch the halftime show? Well, we had watched them rehearse all week. And I did actually go out to see, because I wanted to kind of see how the fans would react to it. That was probably the only time that I've ever stopped and been like, okay, I'm not working right now. And I became a fan for about five minutes. But for the most part, um, I have actually never, the first NFL game I ever went to was Super Bowl 50. I went as a guest, but I've not ever gone to an NFL game because I've always had to work. Uh, I'm just kind of speechless on that because I, I totally get it since I'm in the event side too. It's it's like what you're doing behind the scenes. You don't have to come see what you're doing, no, but no. you enjoy it. And that's what's important. Um, but it is hard work. It is. It is. I mean, and the good thing is just imagine this. When we had events like WrestleMania, um, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock is obviously one of my favorite, you know, one of my favorite actors ever. I mean, I remember setting his green room up, but I never saw him. And, you know, and so sometimes you have to sacrifice the things that I'm a fan primarily of sports, of college sports, um, every, all of the games and any award shows that we've ever done. I've been a, a humongous fan, but, you know, I have a job to do to make sure that I take care of our guests and our public. So what would you say some of the challenges are? Um, we are actually called, we, I, my whole team and I, I actually oversee um, all of our servers. Um, I have 11 managers and four coordinators. We call ourselves Team No Sleep LA because during football season, there's six months out of the year from August to January where not only do you have football games, but our job is to also do special events. So whenever the stadium is, is, is quiet, we have a whole department that actually books galas, meetings, you know, uh, trade shows. So we work consistently. And so I would say what some of the challenges are those weekends where some of my friends are kind of out doing certain things, I can't do it. So um, what I've learned to do is, you know, the challenges are you just have to learn in the off season. Like now, I worked last night, we had a field event. Um, I'm not working this weekend, but in a month we have the Paul McCartney concert. So in the off season, when there's no football, you just have to kind of pick your time. We probably tell everybody to take vacations before August because once preseason starts, it's really hard. Um, so I would say those are the challenges. Um, and it's actually really a joke because by the time we work 14 or 15 days straight and you're, you know, it, it kind of comes with clockwork. Um, I really kind of let everybody dictate their own schedule. It's the one flexibility that I think we do have is that I don't have to be at work at eight and get off at five because we work non-traditional hours, but you just have to take your time off when you can. You work closely with the other departments among the, the stadium. I, and what I don't think a lot of people might know, and, and I didn't actually know it until recently, until I was working with your team, that you're not the only entity at SoFi. So do you work with the Rams, the Chargers, Legends, and then I believe there's a fourth entity that I can't yeah, remember. Exactly. So absolutely. So how the stadium is managed here in LA, SoFi Stadium has a management company called Hollywood Park. Hollywood Park actually is the management company. So they actually control uh, security, parking. Uh, they book the building. They control the calendar. Legends is the hospitality providers who I work for. And we provide all of hospitality, food, beverage, concessions, suites, private events, anything on behalf of the stadium. And then the Rams and the Chargers are also clients of technically of Hollywood Park, even though the Rams ownership actually owns the stadium. So the Rams and the Chargers are also clients of mine because I oversee all of their events at the stadium as well too. So I, we actually have dedicated planners. One person is dedicated to work for the Chargers, one person is dedicated to work for the Rams. And the, and the reason why you do that is because you don't wanna ever have, be on the phone with the Chargers and you actually, you know, you absolutely say, hey, oh yeah, what about this? And it was actually the Rams. And so we, do, we have to be really mindful that when one team is in the building, you respectfully, this is their building. And when the other team is there, respectfully, they're building. So anything that we would wear on a game day or what have you, you have to be very, very certain that you are respectful of the team. And there's not that many stadiums in the, in the country where you do have two teams that actually share a stadium. Uh, that's the difficulty too about being here is that when I was in Dallas, I at least had Sundays off when the Cowboys are playing away. But here in California, when the Rams are playing away, the Chargers are here. When the Chargers are away, the Rams are playing. So 
uh, that's how we got the name Team No Sleep. <laughs> so it really makes sure makes sense that the when you're off season, you're really off season, at least when it comes to the football part of it. Yes, that, that is true. And then we were lucky enough um, the week after Super Bowl, we had the Billboard Musical Women in Music Awards. Um, and then also to YouTube Theater is on the same campus as SoFi Stadium. So tonight, um, I don't know if you all uh, on the call or her is in concert tonight at YouTube Theater. Um, and so it's it's pretty constant that there's something that's consistently going on uh, on that whole campus. <laughs> Keeps you busy. Yeah. If someone would be interested in going into your line of work, obviously you start off on the bottom level, but who do you talk to? What do you do? How do you get into it? So I is I actually tell people all the time is there's these two there's one publication that I think everybody should sign up online as interested in event planning. It's called Biz Bash. It's B-I-Z-B-A-S-H. Biz Bash magazine has regional where they have in West Coast, East Coast, South, and it's it really is a it's almost it's almost like uh, and even for me at this stage it, I I read it because it gives you it kind of feeds your soul like you see different kind of event activations you can go on event marketing say. I don't know, McDonald's decides they want to unveil their new hamburger and they want to do um, an event for that. And it, it's a pop-up event at a mall. You can see something like corporate, you know, or, or companies that actually plan behind the scenes. You may want to work on the catering side and decide that if, um, you know, Katy Perry is in town and they want to do a private event and they need to have catering, maybe you want to work on the front side to actually plan food and beverage. So it really gives you a good um, outline of how the different levels of events um, I would also say that um, really if when and if you decide what college or what your extension will be after high school is, up, you know, everybody works when they're in school. There's a catering company, an event planning company, especially in Los Angeles, that, you know, people in, are working part time and we work with school schedules. You can work at the stadium part time. You can work for event, event planning companies where if you work in SoFi, you only work in SoFi. There's certain offsite catering companies where you could work at a movie studio. You could work at SoFi. You could also work at in a tent where they built out an event if you like that variety. So I would say, you know, I started off working as a server as well, too. I can move tables. I can still set things up. But it also exposes you to kind of figuring out like what line of the working events that you would like to go into. But um, and, and starting off by when you're in, when you go to school, I tell everyone, try it out first. Because some people come to work for us and they're like, I want to be an event planner until they realize the amount of hours and time that it actually takes. And they're like, okay, I'm tapped out now. I can't do it. Or either on the flip side, they absolutely love it. And they just kind of grow without their careers. For someone who might be interested in sports, but not, and, and kind of liking the idea of what you're talking about, do I need to like sports to work at SoFi? Do I like, do I need to like football or is it the opposite that doesn't make any difference? I would say that the one interview in LA is a lot different. The one interview that I used to question that people always ask me when I worked for the Cowboys is everyone will lead in, I'm a huge Cowboys fan. I mean, it was the thing. Normally those are the ones that I'm kind of like, okay, because if you get really caught up in being a fan, it's really hard to be an employee. So um, our bank of manager did not like football at all. So it was great for him when we played. I don't even think Super Bowl was really a big deal for him because he actually worked soccer before he worked football. So actually having any, any knowledge of sports is not necessary. It's really more about hospitality, taking care of people, attention to detail, and, um, and really just being open-minded about, I work in the catering side. So being open-minded of if somebody says, okay, here's a hamburger, but it's made of duck or it's made of veal, or if you have to try beets for the first time, I'll tell everybody, try everything once, um, you'd be surprised. Are you involved in, in preparing the menu? Uh, yes, <laughs> which is uh, different. Um, our Billboard Music Awards, uh, they actually wanted a vegan gluten-free menu for 500 people. So you think, how can you do that? But we ended up doing a beluga which was a, a lentil-based sauce that actually tastes just like spaghetti. And then the pasta was made out of zucchini. And it was actually really beautiful, but surprisingly, it tasted and looked like zucchini, but it was actually really healthy. So it's really funny how now, especially you have to be careful with gluten allergies and people that are celiac and all the other things that happen. But uh, yeah, so working with, part of my job is to make sure that I also have a great relationship with our culinary team, which are all the chefs, 
some of the chefs that I've worked with over the years and some of my really great friends. And you also do have to understand your client. Like uh, when I worked for the Cowboys, Mr. Jones and the Jones family, which is the, the owners of the Cowboys, um, I worked and I planned all of their events personally. They're from the South, so they love fried chicken. And if you can make fried chicken in 10 elegant ways, that's pretty much what we had to do. <laughs> that sounds fun. Um, and, and of course, you get to taste everything, too, I'm sure. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, I think on the pastry side, the pastries really make it hard because we have some incredible pastry chefs. Um, in the off season, we also do ask the, our managers to go work in other areas. So when I pick my area of interest, I'll actually go work in the pastry kitchen. Um, and they literally have the hardest job I've ever imagined because everything in pastry is by science. It's by ounce and weight. And a lot of people would really be surprised about that too. Okay. Um, we've talked about, you, at the beginning, you talked about some of the skills that you learned in college and doing what you were doing that kind of transferred over. What kind of things do you think that would be important, practical skills that you may not get either in high school or in college that would be able to be applied? Um, because public speaking, we might do in college, but is there, is there things that are transferable? I think really being organized, and that kind of starts really with yourself, because you can be organized in so many ways, whether it's personally or professionally, and really just having an eye for detail. Like when you walk down a hallway and say you see a piece of trash on the floor, do you pick it up? And if and you're the only one that's walking down the hallway or if there's a scuff on the wall or if something just looks out of place. I mean, generally, that it kind of starts with all the little details will really matter when you plan events. Um, I think one of the things, too, is being able to listen and be mindful of like what expectations. The one thing I always ask someone when we're planning an event are what are your expectations and what are the expectations of your guests? Because. Once somebody walks in an event, whether you're at a football stadium or you're at a, a hotel or you could be at a restaurant, what do you want your guests to feel on their way out? You want them, to, you know, is it the food? Is it the, is it the atmosphere? You know, is it, every, is it everything overall? Are you there to celebrate a birthday? Are you doing a milestone? I mean, we've done, we, we, we've done funerals too. So, you know, it just really depends. I think you have to understand like what, when you're planning an event specifically, what is your, what are the guests to, to get out of that? Um, and I think lastly, one of the things I would say is that you always have to be respectful of people in all different positions, the housekeepers, the dishwashers, because trust me, I can't do an event if they don't wash the dishes. I can't do an event if it's not clean. So being respectful and mindful of knowing housekeepers by their first name and knowing that everybody is um, everybody works as a specific team in order to get the project primarily completed. Great. And um, we have some questions from students I'm going to pass over to you. Okay. Um, how do you manage your time? <laughs> well, I'm a night owl. So unfortunately, I'm not a morning person. And I actually, when you're the boss, you can set your time for meetings. So all of my meetings start at 1045, which means it gives me a little time. I get up in the morning. I work out in the morning before I go to work or I'll walk. I'll try to meditate. The cool thing about being here in California is that I lived away from the mountains for 24 years and I just can't get enough of them. So it's really, it's the craziest thing. I mean, I think everyone takes advantage of like, oh yeah, the mountains are up there, but um, I just try to make sure I quiet the day down. And then once we get into the stadium, my door is open and it's constant people walking by. Um, I actually am guilty because I don't do lunch. I actually hate lunch. I, I eat lunch at my desk. Um, <laughs> and I, I mean, I'm probably getting but I'm giving you the reality of it. Um, and so organizing my time, primarily, we also meet as a group every morning at, uh, at 1045. And when we meet, we kind of talk about what everyone's doing for the day. We also talk about, you know, how the event went from last night, what are some of the hits or misses, and then we kind of talk about what's happening in the future. Um, I, and I'm, we're so planners that we actually have to plan, you know, weeks on weeks out just to make sure I'm, I'm very respectful of when I assign an event to someone hey, are you going to a wedding next weekend? Your mom's coming in town. We also try to make sure we, back, we backfill to give everyone time for their personal life as well, too. Um, you know, in this job, uh, I was lucky enough that my, uh, I was divorced, but my daughter was five when I started. She's 25 now. And I used to take her to work with me in the hotels. When I worked in hotels, she was sitting in the hotel rooms with me. Um, she's been to many of games and she actually got tickets to Super Bowl and decided she didn't want to go, which was, who does that? Um, but um, I think over the years, 
uh, just making sure that I have also balanced time for family. Um, she played volleyball in high school. I used to take my laptop and work when she was sitting on the bench. So you just have to make time. Is it an industry that's important about, is networking important in this industry? Absolutely, networking. And I think don't be afraid ever to kind of reach out to someone no matter, you know, and I tell people all the time that reach out to me on LinkedIn. I try to give an hour or 45 minutes to anyone who takes the time to say, hey, you know, can you give me some advice? But because it happened for me. Um, but I think that networking is really important. Um, actually, when I got my job working for the Cowboys, there were 280 people that applied for the job. And Mr. Jones's personal planner was a colleague of mine that I reached out to when I was looking and they gave my resume right to the Cowboys direct. And although I still went through the interview process, networking really um, helped a lot because I also had their support going into my interview process as well. So it's very, very important. Are there mentorship opportunities or internships in the field? We, because LA is really new, um, I did have a really strong internship program in uh, Dallas, which we're trying to enact here in California. Um, you do have to be a college student. Um, you do have to be 18 to actually work at the stadium as well. But I do encourage internships. Um, and, and what I like to do with our interns is really give them a feel for our business, not having you file paperwork or just actually sit and make photocopies, but really be engulfed in how we actually plan. So we are in the process of setting up internships. Um, mentoring, I, do, I, I think I just probably do it just because, um, like I said, reaching out to me primarily on, on LinkedIn is how I connect with a lot of people. And I usually always try to make time, no matter what, to give somebody at least 30 minutes of my time um, and, and follow up as well, too. Um, I've been lucky enough that my last three assistants have all, they're all managers and directors in their own uh, facilities now, and two of them actually, after they finished internship, their interns, they kept in contact with me. And so when it was time for me to hire, I was like, oh my goodness, what about so-and-so? And they were all ready to work. So yes. Amazing. Um, do you get to travel at all? Um, not as much as I like. I actually, um, we did have an opportunity to go out to other stadiums to kind of help. I'm actually part of a special events group where all these, all of the special events uh, directors work at other stadiums. So once a year in March, we do travel. I've gone to Vegas. We've been to Green Bay. Um, the Packers Stadium, as old as it is, actually one of the most iconic, really impressive of that one. Kansas City, Denver, uh, Levi Stadium in, in San Francisco. Um, so yes, I do get a chance to travel at least once a year, but my primarily base is here. So Team No Sleep can't get on a plane all the time. <laughs> Not right now. Um, do you have... In, in the position, or have you seen it in the industry, are there glass ceilings that you have to address? Absolutely. Um, I think in hospitality, and I'm actually kind of doing, um, you know, quite to be frank in that situation right now. I've been, I've been with my company 10 years. Um, this was a lateral move for me. Um, I've done every major event at a sporting venue. Super Bowl was pretty much the last event on my bucket list. But if you think of WrestleMania, uh, college football playoff, um, uh, music awards, every concert you could imagine. I did when I was in Dallas. And so being here, it's kind of like now what? So a lot of times what you will see, I think, um, especially as you go up the food chain, what people do complain a lot about is that there's not a lot of diversity when it comes to executive management in the hospitality field. So I'm actually in the process of creating a position for myself because I know the talent that I have, you know, with the 18 years in, 10 years in our company that I can do more. And what I would like to do is kind of bridge people at our management levels that are doing catering and events on different venues and bring us all together so we can all kind of work with synergy and also kind of, you know, with resources and support. Um, and instead of me kind of waiting around for someone to create a position for me, I decided that I would do it for myself. So there, you know, and then there's, you know, you also do not find a lot of people of color, a lot of women, you know, that are in these roles, because as we get up to more of general management, they are primarily men. Um, but I really have found that I just really have been putting myself out there and doing a lot of networking. And like I said, really creating my own lane instead of waiting for somebody to create it for myself. I think it's an important, a, a good message for everybody to understand. You don't stop networking when you get your first job. You keep going and it never stops. It just kind of evolves as, as things change, as, as jobs change, as roles change. Yeah, and then I think what's also important too is, you know, I'm also at a stage, remember, I started this job when this new career path when I was 36. 
And so I'm also above the eight ball because I'm older than everyone else as well too. But the good thing is I not only have a strong network and bridge of people that I worked with when I was in Texas, people here in LA, and then also too, you know, I think I've turned, I've turned into more of a mentoring role because my staff, you know, everybody is a little younger, but I think we all continually, I can make a phone call and say, hey, you know, Marissa's looking for another job. Do you have anything? And that power of networking has gone a long way. Um, Cause I'm, I'm a true believer. I have a coordinator that came to me earlier this week. He is, uh, he wants, he, he couldn't handle football season. So he's, he's tapping out of team, no sleep. So I told him make a list of places that you want to work. I know some people, let me make some phone calls for you. I'm, I'm not that kind of manager that's like, okay, you're not going to work for us. I don't care anymore, but I really want to make sure that everybody should be fulfilled and doing something they want, they want to do. And then I've been given this platform and I can network to make things happen for other people that that's what I'm here to do as well. Amazing. Sounds like an amazing opportunity to work for you and with you. Um, someone asked, and it, you, you brought it up a couple of times. Um, there's been a question about WrestleMania. How is it like working with them? Was it oh. <laughs> okay, so WrestleMania was supposed to be here this year, but we they moved to Dallas because of COVID. So they had it this weekend. And the team that worked at WrestleMania were all the people that I actually hired. So when I did WrestleMania uh, 16, I actually got the chair. So whoever asked that question, I didn't know what the decorative chair meant when I got it as a gift. And I almost gave it away. I was like, why do I want a chair with Roman Reigns and uh, and I forget uh, the, the Undertaker? I didn't know anything about wrestling. So if you were not a wrestling fan, it was an amazing event to work. 100,000 fans. It was crazy. Um, we had a, we had maybe six parties at the same time, um, but WrestleMania was actually a really fun event to work. I think it's probably on my list of the top five, my first being Final Four. I did the Final Four in 2014 and um, obviously the Super Bowl. Did Never you like watch the game last night? Did you, I mean, do you, in, in your off time, do you ever have time to watch some of the stuff that you've done in the past? I didn't watch Final Four last night because we had a field event. Um, I actually didn't watch, I, I taped Super Bowl, I haven't watched it yet. And for those of you who are Rams fans, that weekend that we didn't know that the Rams were going to beat Tampa, we were all assuming that we were not, you know, we knew Super Bowl was coming, but who would have thought the Rams were going to beat Tampa and Green Bay was going to lose to San Francisco and we had a playoff game. So I wasn't even at home and somebody texted me like, hey, I never watched anything when people were away. I never watched a Cowboys game on TV until I moved out here. So isn't that crazy? And I like sports. I'm a college football fan. So go, go LSU Tigers. Um, my daughter, my daughter uh, graduated from there and all my uh, to retirement actually paid for her to go to school there too. So I read, I read her watch college football on Saturdays and I do on Sunday. Okay. Well, we're getting close for, I, I got the one minute wrap up. Um, is there any partying information that you think that we hadn't covered that students should know? Um, I would say, you know, it all really starts where you are now. So whether you're in high school, you know, maybe there's something you want to get involved in because you never know until you like it. I mean, I, I love working in yearbook. I used to take photographs for the, um, you know, at the time you guys are really more digital forward now. So, you know, even working on your social media for school, those things are really important. I mean, not everyone's going to be an influencer, but what about, you know, helping build those brands when it's, you know, when, when um, you know, for, for your school or activity, it, it all really kind of starts now. And some of those things you actually try until you like it. I mean, you could be a graphic designer, you could actually write copy. Um, you could also be a planner like me. So I think really starting about, you know, getting involved in high school is really important. Um, I also think once going to college is scary because you basically go from the four years of what you know, to now you're in this big place is now, now what do you do? And so, you know, a way to meet people are joining clubs, you know, uh, you know, uh, and obviously always say yes to something that you would say no to, and you'd be surprised. Great advice. That's really great advice. <laughs> and, and you're, you've been very successful doing it that way. So I, I think we should all take it. And thank you so, so very much for joining us. You're really welcome. Appreciate it. And if anyone wants to reach out, um, cause I know you all are on social media. So my work Instagram is the is the number four Monique M O N I Q E at work. So it's for Monique at work. Um, please reach out um, on you know via those social media channels. And then I'm also Monique Boyd on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is really really important, especially once you all get to college, um, mm -hmm. to stay connected as well too. So I'm always here if you need me. Okay. 
lots and lots of thank yous coming out in the chat. So thank you so much. I have to echo them all. Really enjoyed talking to you. Okay, thank you.